Good afternoon, I'm Francis Micah. I'm the Information Officer for the Regional District of Kootenai Boundary Emergency Operations Center. And uh, a number of us on the call here today, and uh, I'll let everybody introduce themselves, but what we're doing today is providing um, kind of an outlook on the first and showing you some of the ways that we get data to make decisions. And uh, just helps to frame uh, uh, your understanding of what we're doing when we're talking about likelihood of flooding and the likelihood of, of rivers peaking and, and so on. So I'll turn it over uh, to Graham Watt. All right, thanks Francis. Uh, Graham Watt, uh, City of Grand Forks, and I'm in the uh, advanced planning section. So uh, today we'll be taking a look at uh, the overall watershed, uh, the snowpack levels, the current river flow, a uh, bit of information on the weather forecast, and river flow forecast as we know from today, and then talk a little bit about the potential impacts and preparedness um, for if there is a flooding event that, that comes from uh, the potential over the next week or so. So I'm just gonna switch to several tabs and uh, uh, actually I've got a map to go first. Uh, so Christina Anderson uh, with Dirty Kiwi, maybe if you can take a uh, take us through the watershed and, and the location of the data sources we'll be looking at. Sure, thank you, Graham. So I'm Christina Anderson with the Watershed Planner of the Regional District of Kootenai Boundary here in the Grand Forks office. And this is a look at all the different snow and discharge, so the water flow stations that we're looking at to help us get a better understanding of what's happening in terms of freshet so what you have is you've got three different images. You've got the blue snowflake that is looking at the automated stations. So these are the ones that we're getting in that real time. So people have heard us talk about Grano Station or the Mission Station. So you can see the outline of the boundary um, to be able to show what's within our watershed boundary. Keeping in mind the Kettle River watershed is quite a bigger area than our watershed boundary. So it includes some of those upper stations at the top. You've got the yellowy snowflake ones, they're manual stations. So they're only taken once a month, the beginning of every month. So we've actually got some results coming in pretty soon here for some of our stations. So that's pretty exciting. And we are also looking at some of the US stations. So both Discharge, Kettle River at the at, uh, Ferry and Kettle River at Laurier. And so they really help us with an understanding of what's happening that, in the big Kettle River system. And then of course the Sentinel Snow Station at the very base there in the States. Yeah, that's our stations. And so we are going to be putting this map up and there's going to be a KML link to be able to give you so that you can upload those stations onto Google Earth. So that will be on our website in the next couple of days. Sure. All right. So I'll uh, uh, take you into our world of tabs here that we are always looking at. Um, so typically we've got 10 or 15 tabs open when we're preparing our daily update. And we start uh, by looking at the snowpack. And so the uh, BC River Forecast Centre has a snow stations interactive map that shows the Canadian st stations that Christina was mentioning. You can add the manual ones on here and you basically can click on a spot and pull out a report to look at a graph for a given location. So this one, for instance, is uh, Grano. I can pull that report out right there and you'll see the current year in blue and then historical data overlaid uh, on top of it. So last year, 2019 is shown here. And then the maximum is the top of this gray line up here. So in this pink area, we're basically um, at the top range of a normal snowpack, um, but there's still 25% of years are have higher snowpack than we do currently at the Grano station. So that's a good example of we, we are above normal or about 120% of normal for, for Grano Creek. Uh, snow pillow station, uh, but it's not the extreme we saw of 2018, and it's not the very dry year that we saw in 2019. So a couple of other examples at the far northwestern edge, uh, just outside of the watershed, but very much like our uh, upper watershed area, uh, we've got about 140% of normal on Mission Creek, so that's elevated, so the north end of the watershed has a lot of snow. But as we look down into the southern half of our watershed, this is uh, to the east of Penticton, kind of between Penticton and Beaverdale. And you can see that it's melting fast and it's well below normal now. Um, it's melting fast. It's already kind of going into its spring runoff. In the middle of our watershed, I mentioned Grano Creek already. It's got still a lot of snow. Uh, but then that one American station south of the border 
it's now effectively zero. It's got less than an inch of what's called snow water equivalent or the amount of water that's in a column of snow. It's basically down to trace amounts of snow. So in the southern half of the watershed, the lower elevation sites, they're very melted out uh, compared to the high elevation sites. And what that means is if we get a widespread storm system, there's more areas that are dry, uh, it decreases some of the concern. So talking about weather, um, this is a, a set of maps that's issued uh, Monday through Saturday from the BC River Forecast Centre that provides their outlook that they're using for their model on temperature and precipitation for the whole province. So you can see there's a scale there. We look at that to see, are we seeing some warming coming and are we seeing precipitation coming? So in the next several days, there's some up and down with temperatures, not a lot of precipitation, um, and we're, we're able to go, um, we're able to go through and, and get good information from that. Uh, likewise, on the American side, the Northwest River Forecast Center looks at the entire Columbia Basin, and we can look at their uh, weather forecasts as well to understand the data that they're looking at for their, uh, their stuff. So you'll hear us often talk about clever models. And so uh, clever models um, are able to, are, are from the BC River Forecast Center. They take all that weather data, they push it on top of the snowpack and the, the moisture conditions that we're seeing, and they give us an idea, a computer model, of what runoff could do in the next several days. Now keep in mind, it is a model. The first few days are fairly high confidence. And then because the rain, the rain forecast, precipitation forecast uh, is, is not that reliable beyond about four to five days, uh, the second part of these are always unreliable. So example, the Kettle River near Westbridge, it's showing uh, a rise uh, from some of the precipitation coming maybe Sunday, Monday. It's showing a rise by uh, May 5th, but just to a normal one or two year flood level, the kind of thing you see uh, almost every year. Um, so a normal kind of flood flow. Mm -hmm. uh, at Westbridge, which is uh, Kettle River, uh, the West Kettle River, um, north of Rock Creek there, it's actually getting into a little bit of a minor flooding at that point, uh, once again early next week, uh, based on this forecast. And, uh, and we'll, once again, we'll be monitoring this and seeing this if it comes up. It could introduce some low-lying flooding, uh, depending on what it looks like. And then as an example from the Granby, uh, we're seeing somewhere between a one and a two-year flow. So normal kind of getting to the tops of the banks without major flooding in the next week. There's one other station that we look at regularly. Uh, that's the Kettle River near Ferry, and it, um, uh, right now the forecast is is well below even what they consider an action stage. And what they've got is some different markers where they think about action, minor flooding, moderate flooding, and major. So their major flood is at 20 and a half feet at uh, Ferry, which is near Midway, and their um, uh, current level is about 15 feet, forecast to go up to 16 feet. Going back to 2018, our major flood year was 22.5 feet, and our 2017 peak was 20.67. So you can see that both of those are up in the top here in the major flood zone, uh, quite a few feet above where we're uh, at currently or expecting. But as you said, Graham, we still have a lot of snow to come down. There's a lot of snow to come down, exactly. So I'm just going to switch back to a key point from our, our PowerPoint. Um, because we've got a high snowpack still, it's really sensitive to that rain on snow. The rain isn't, the major rain isn't forecast, but that can change in a two to three day period. We're watching closely and, uh, and paying attention to what could change um, and, and working with our EOC and Emergency Management BC uh, counterparts to, to be prepared. Uh, is Chris still on the call to take some key messages about that? Hi, Graham. Yes, I am. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Chris Marsh, uh, Emergency Operations Center Deputy Director uh, for the Regional District of Kootenai Boundary. Uh, we are activated at a level two activation. Uh, it's not our highest level in 2018. We're at, we were at a level three, uh, but it's still a significant activation for us, and it's in response to both uh, fresh at 2020 for the boundary and also for our COVID-19 response for our regional district. Uh, 
I just want to reiterate how challenging it is for, for folks like Christina and Graham to, to evaluate this information and to provide the kinds of forecasts for, the, for people that you know, are useful. Uh, it's incredibly challenging because the data does change on a daily basis and it makes it really difficult to forecast if a flood's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and at what level it's going to happen. So it's, it's a challenge for us, but uh, this, these data are being uh, evaluated daily so, uh, and, and several times throughout the day. So we're putting a lot of effort into understanding this and being able to try to convey that. Um, in regards to some of the operational things that the Emergency Operations Centre is doing, we're working closely with our partners at Emergency, Emergency Management British Columbia. Uh, we are moving some protective flood works uh, into the boundary region. Um, at this point, they're just coming in as a precaution. Uh, things like tiger dams that we saw in uh, downtown Grand Forks a few years ago. Uh, at this point, we don't have plans to deploy them unless we're faced with some sort of catastrophic uh, flooding, which is not forecast at this time, but uh, we want to be prepared and and again our partners at EMBC are helping us with that. And we're also working on rolling out a sand and sandbag program. Um, currently, if people want sandbags, they are available uh, from the village of Midway and also from the city of Grand Forks. Uh, but at this time, we don't have them staged out in the community, but uh, if these uh, models change over the next few days, we'll certainly be making those available to everybody who needs them and that'll be reevaluated on a daily basis. So, thank you. Great. So, uh, with that, I'd just like to thank um, Graham, uh, Chris and Christina for this update and we'll be providing more information in the coming days. As we get closer to Friday, we'll have some better idea of what, what the rainfall looks like and we'll provide some more information on that. And if anybody needs information, um, uh, about how to prepare for the Fouchette, uh, please visit um, emergency.odkb.com. So thanks everybody. Take care.